So yeah, you see, uh, listening to that now, he's going from 12 8s into a pattern of 9s. And in order to get there, you see, rather than staying in the kind of European, Western philosophy of music, he's gone into more like the kind of Eastern Indian <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Greetings everyone, welcome to our latest video. This has been one that we've been putting off for a long, long time. You know, we did our top 10 prog guitarists shoot out, or top 10 bass players shoot out, and people have been saying to us, oh, you should do the drummers. Every time we sat down to do the drummers, we started talking about it, didn't we? Yeah. And from talking, it turned into some sort of terrible nightmare. Oh, no. Scenario. How? How? Like, this was not fun for me at all, and I'm very unhappy doing it, so... Dara, don't be unhappy. Be happy, you know. What? It was too hard. It was very hard. <laughs> and this was the hardest thing now that I've had to do so far on the channel. So we picked ten each. So Tara picked her ten, I picked my ten, and we ranked them. Now, between <laughs> these people in the rankings is minuscule. You know, you couldn't fit a credit card between them. Like, you know, it was like... Uh, What's it, it say? So could like. be like, uh, yeah, yeah, putting a credit card into a certain part of Miles Davis's anatomy when he was hitting a certain note on that trumpet, you know. So <laughs> you 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 couldn't do it like millimeters between each of these people. It was amazing. Also, like looking at it, I have to say, like a lot came into my head about these drummers. Like, there's two different types. There's the kind of force of nature, and there's the kind of real technically brilliant drummer you know um how do you compare one of them with the other they don't really compare some people naturally have rhythm you know i know some people i grew up with and the whole family of them could just sit behind the drum kit and play it mm. you know uh they just had this natural sense of time and rhythm and everything they like to do so um we've, we've put them together and you know to, some of mine are forces of nature, some of mine are technically great. So therefore, like what separates them is just me and how I feel about it. Okay, uh, a couple of them are kind of innovative, you know. So I've put them in as well. Okay, so I'm going to go first. Stop it, Tara. <laughs> You'll be fine. You'll be fine. I'll go first and show her how it's done. Huh? <laughs> That's new. <laughs> I'm starting off with Steve Gadd. Okay. Uh, Sky played on the soundtrack to my life as I was growing up. He was kind of on every bloody album and record and everything that year. Fabulous session drummer. But that drum break that he does in the title track of Asia by Steely Dan uh, deserves him to be in there somewhere anyway. So I've put him at number 10. Even though technically this guy is a fabulous drummer and will be number one on many people's lists and i completely understand that if he is so steve gadd i'm starting with tara oh my god no like <laughs> this is so hard and ranking him was even worse uh, so my number 10 is a, a trailblazer in drumming and he is absolutely brilliant and even putting him at number 10 just goes to show how how good this list is so i have picked john bonham at number 10 uh, I think everyone immediately thinks of that sound from the start of when the levee breaks when they think of John Bonham that hard hitting mm -hmm. but he was just he was unreal like and I picked out the presence as well to show because Achilles last stand the drumming he does alongside Jimmy Page is just <laughs> so good but yeah I had to put him at number 10 because my list is full of absolute legends. There's something, like, just... there's something I'm thinking of as you're seeing this, Tara. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. A big hitter, big sound. He used to use big bass drums. Yeah. That was one of his things. You know, the old dance bands back in the 30s, they used to have these huge big bass drums. So he used to use a huge big bass drum. <laughs> he wasn't the first guy in rock to do. It was Carmen and Boys from Vanilla Fudge. Was it? And if you listen to Carmen and Boys' sound or Apice or however you pronounce his name, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a. Does, does John Bonham picked up a bit from there? Although, like, that's not knocking John Bonham. Please don't attack me. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. okay. <laughs> So uh, the next guy is a guy I've seen playing live a few times and I, I've been amazed by him, which is Brand Daler from um, Mastodon. 
Uh, I saw them on the tour for this album, uh, and uh, I mean, the, the sky was just amazing, like, you know. And uh, I saw him on the tour for Crack the Sky, and I saw him on the tour for, uh, I think, The Hunter. And on all the times, I mean, the guy is amazing. He's, he's like, his hands are a blur on the mm -hmm. kit. And uh, at the same time, he's singing. Yeah. Which is mind blowing. Like, you know, I don't know how he does it. Um, fantastic drummer. Great drummer, like one of the key features of this band. What are you smiling at me for now? Because I'm just thinking of him and, and his big goofy age that he does in all their music videos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, he's a, seems like a real nice, funny guy as well. Yeah. I remember the last time I went to see Mastodon, it was up in that place in Dublin. What's the name of it? Where the we're Academy. Going? The Academy. And they played the set, and at the end of it, they all they were finished and then they all went to the microphone to say something to the audience and he was the only guy we could understand <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was either the drink or their accents I don't know which but Brandela from Mastodon yes number nine for me is Ian Pace oh my god at number nine like I feel so <laughs> But he's just, he's absolutely brilliant, Ian Bates. This doesn't discredit him at all. Uh, he's one of the first uh, kind of speedy drummers that I would have heard when I was very young. Uh, especially Highway Star, like, mm. do, 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 like, oh, he was just fantastic, so, mm. yeah. I Bates. love the bit in space talking where you keep thinking he's reached the height of the speed and then he goes up another level and up another level. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, he was he was probably the guy that really kind of introduced me to virtuoso drumming. I thought he was just fantastic. But uh, another guy who's kind of very underrated, I think, mm. is uh, Cozy Powell. Um, so I put Cozy in here because uh, just like a, a few nights ago, I was watching some YouTube videos and something came up with Cozy Powell band. And he had Jack Bruce on bass, Clem Clemson was on guitar, he was on drums. And, and they were playing this kind of jazz fusion thing and I was looking at it going, oh my God, did that man have a band like that? And I think it was the Cozy Powell band. It was just incredible. Um, fabulous drummer. Anything I've ever heard this guy on, he's there. Do you know, mm -hmm. I mean, he's he's just there. He's he's amazing. I love Cozy Powell. So Cozy had to go into the list, yes. So thank you, Cozy. Right. Number eight, number eight. Oh, it's bad, isn't it, Mike Portnoy, I have at number eight. Uh, he's he's one of the greatest drummers I've ever heard. Uh, and he took a lot of inspiration from the guys that came before him, which he will always give credit yeah, to. Yeah, and fair play to him, which yeah. is why he's kind of low on my list because I have these guys up above. But, um, yeah, I, I feel awful, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Mike Portnoy. A fantastic drummer, fantastic writer as well. Mm. Uh, Creative the force, like that person, he's yeah. he's put into these Dream Theater albums, mm. um, and just incredibly talented all around. Mm. Uh, yeah. No, no, great choice, great choice. I do like Mr. Portnoy. And uh, what album did you pick? Dear? Train of Thought. Train of Thought. Yeah, yeah, some heavy hitting on that. Mm. All right, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Some of the things that I'm thinking too about these drummers, I've seen a lot of drummers live. That's one thing that came out. Look, I'm not knocking you. I just, I've seen a lot of these guys live. So part of it too with me is performance. Okay. So if I've seen the person live and I've been really impressed with their performance, it's going to, it's going to come into my ranking, you know? So, uh, I can't do that. Please bear that in mind. <laughs> so I think we're going to hit our first kind of innovator here, which is, is Danny Carey, is it, with two? Sorry, I have to keep checking with her because I keep getting the first names wrong. <laughs> It's my uh, impending uh, mental decline at my age, but I seem to keep getting the na first names. So I was doing uh, Sergeant Pepper in one of the last videos. I said, I wanted to say Peter Blake, and I said, William Blake, the poet, <laughs> <laughs> who has a painting on the cover of Grave New World by uh, the Strobes, so I could have got away with it if I held that up. But uh, yeah, Tool. I actually the first time I saw Mastodon they were playing support to Tool uh, on the tour for this album and um, I uh, you know this guy's a, he's a he's an interesting drummer he plays in that kind of uh, eastern style it's very 
kind of he's he's there he's loud he's with the music he's up front but it's also there's a kind of hypnotic element to his playing mm, yeah. which is uh fantastic and very unusual so yeah i've got to put danny carey in so what number is that now that's number six danny carey is so, it number six well i've gone number ten seven now. nine eight oh sorry seven yeah sorry <laughs> forgive me Big Nate. <laughs> a big Nate. Yeah, we got him. A big butterfly Nate would be in it. Oh my god, I can't believe this is that number. I'm just going to give out for this whole video. <laughs> my number seven is Alan White, oh and of god. course, I picked out Relayer because of Sound Chaser. <laughs> like, oh my god. Um, and when I one of my core memories, as I'd call it, was when I saw him at ten years old, and he did a big drum solo, oh, and yeah, he yeah, was yeah. just going and going, and it was real hard hitting, and he he was God, like how old would he have been then, like? I don't know, but he was old, and it was just not a bother to him, and it, it was my first ever concert, and I was mind blown. Um, yeah, he just. The fact that he could come into the band and do something like Tales from Topographic Oceans, <laughs> oh, like, just goes to show he was very skilled uh, and he worked with loads of people before, yes, even John Lennon and everyone, like. Yeah, George Harrison too, I think, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, very underrated guy too. Absolutely. Uh, I think he's constantly in the it. shadow of the other chap that had the drum still for, uh, with, yes, but I do think he had, a, he, he this guy, Alan White, had a vocabulary in drumming which is just like second to none mm -hmm. it's just just incredible you listen to it and even like how his sound changed across the different albums is incredible but there's a certain heat he does that you just know it's alan white yeah it's, it's just you'd recognize him yeah straight away yeah, so yeah. yeah just great thanks yeah great great thanks. thank you <laughs> thank you for picking alan white no you see we we haven't uh we haven't coordinated this at all just to let you know so um we haven't coordinated and like you know i'm kind of surprised with some of the stuff Tara's bringing in and alan white like i, I didn't pick alan white and i'm delighted to see him in there. so my next one is number six isn't it is uh is keith moon uh sorry the cash is making noise like, but, uh, <laughs> with the who uh talk about a force of nature yeah. i mean this guy is just kind of um he's like a hurricane it's like you know he was born to drum and it's just it's just him being himself and it's it's incredible and you know it's not technically the best drumming in the world neither you know and he has little kind of things that he repeats now again there's little kind of cliches in his playing mm -hmm. but like the whole package of looking at film of this guy playing i never got to see him live of course i was a bit too young for that but um uh, you know, you just look at film of him playing, it just, uh, I mean, the performance element of it, uh, the amount of kind of effort that this guy is putting in, and it's just incredible. Uh, so keep moving, yeah. Great actor as well, wasn't he? He was brilliant, <laughs> yes, and Tommy. She loves Tommy. That's I do. Great. What's this again? Number six. Number six. Oh, number six. Jesus Christ. Oh, you'll be, you'll yeah, be hung. Yeah. She'll, she'll be hung out to dry over this one. Like. Bill Bruford. Mm. Uh, obviously started, I first heard him in Yes when he was playing with them and uh, then I heard him with King Crimson and especially on this album, that real heavy do do do, I thought was unreal. And of course he's played with so many people, he was brilliant in UK. Uh, he was brilliant when he was drumming with Genesis on Seconds Out. Like he's played he was, with three of the big six in Prague. Yeah. And you like, have him at number six. I know. Plus UK, plus like Bruford, yeah. plus Earthworks. You know. This was really difficult, all right. Like, oh, okay. There'll be people out there that'll be upset. But he's a complete and utter legend. And we'll have to turn off the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. No, 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 Jeez. but uh, yeah, yeah, he's uh, absolutely excellent. So I want to go over then to somebody who is just technically absolutely mind-blowing, uh, which is Carol Palmer. Uh, now, like I said, I saw a lot of these drummers live. I've seen Bruford live, you know, I've seen 
uh, you know, a brand deal, or as I said, I've seen him live several times. I saw Tom, uh, Danny Carey live, you know, uh, and I saw Carol Palmer live, and Carol Palmer was the greatest live drummer I have ever seen in my life. So he's now number five with me. But uh, he was playing along with the melody, keeping time, uh, absolutely astounding uh, live drummer. I saw him playing with ELP and he was just, he just absolutely mind blowing. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, I can say he's the greatest drummer I've ever seen. Uh, listening to him, he's, he's very technical and things, but there, there's kind of a, a slight coldness in his playing, mm. you know. So when you put him up against a guy like Keith Moon, who's kind of all over the shop, Carol Palmer's very busy, he keeps it all going, but it's very kind of precise in what he does. So yeah, I love Carol Palmer, so there you go. So he's number, number five, five, was he? Yeah. yeah okay. So my number five then oh. is... <laughs> can't take it anymore. Terry Bozio. Oh god, a great drummer, yeah. I mean, even to play with Frank Zappa in the first place, you've got to be good, like, you mm. have to be very good, and he was brilliant. Didn't he play with Jeff Beck as well? Like? Yeah, and I, I was torn between Chester Thompson and Terry, and uh, I see Chester mentioned in these lists all the time, so I said I'd give Terry a chance, like, because he was fantastic, and uh, yeah, I just... <laughs> Terry Bozio's family. I mean, I saw Terry Bozio playing live. Oh, Jeff it's Bates. surprise, surprise. <laughs> and I mean, he, he was astounding. He's so unreal, you know? like, and, and he just, you can really hear his presence on each album he played with, with Zappa, like, and oh, he's just one of those drummers that kind of comes to mind for me straight away. When yeah. someone asked me about great drummers, like, yeah. like, he just always comes straight into my head. Yeah. So. You know, when you think of the drumming and the rhythm as the foundation of the music, Terry Bozio, when he plays, he's not just the foundation, it's like they poured the concrete floor as well when he plays. Yeah. Because he's just filled out all that Yeah, area. it's like he's, it's he's just fantastic. He is fantastic. Yeah. yeah, yeah, great choice, great choice there. Now we're down to number four, are we? Yeah. Uh, so, number four, I've put in Mike Portnoy. Well, thank God you have him up higher, so I won't be eating alive. For all the reasons you mentioned, I just think he's great. He's a great drummer, uh, great live performer, uh, great character, um, great artist, you know. I mean, he tries to kind of bring uh, something to what he works on beyond just, you know. I mean, there's always people are always slagging off drummers, aren't they? They're, a, they're an idiot that hangs out with musicians mm. and things like that, you know. Whereas um, this guy, very clever man, great man. He has a bit of that force of nature thing about him, but he is extremely precise in his playing. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't say he's kind of a combination of the both, because I think when he sits down at the drum stool, he becomes the quintessential drummer. But then the amount of drums he plays and the kind of patterns he plays are that little bit of that force of nature thing, but he doesn't let that take control when he's behind the kit. When mm. he's behind the kit, he's perfect. Uh, so yeah, uh, my port now, we have our tickets booked to go and see him in London. Coming That's up. their first gig back with my port now. Is it? It's going to be fun Is night. It? And the last time I saw Dream Theater, it was with my port now, and it was on the Black Clouds and Silver Linings tour, and it was one of the last gigs they did on that as well. So, and I never went to see him with Mangini. <laughs> Tell you what, that was a, that was a clever decision. <laughs> So there you go. Not that there's anything wrong with white man genie, I mean, you know. And I have I'm not fit to carry sticks. <laughs> <laughs> I put Carol Palmer in at my number four because he's one of those drummers that just absolutely blew me away when I first heard him. And I, I tend to watch them playing live quite a lot because I'm never going to get to see it, obviously. So I watch a lot of it on YouTube and he just... And he never stops like and to be able to um to keep up with Keith Emerson the way he did is just incredible. Um you can tell this guy's whole life was the drums, like, you know, he they did an interview and they said like, What would you be doing if you weren't drumming? And he was like, I'd probably be dead so, <laughs> so But yeah, he's just absolutely fantastic 
the time signatures he can get into are just crazy. Mm. Um, yeah, having him at number four even feels so wrong, but mm. yeah. I digress. It's a great list. It's, it's a terrible hard list, like, you know. So, I mean, any of these could be number one. And a lot yeah. of it with me is just based on my own kind of preference as well, because yeah. I had to bring this in. Because if I didn't, if I just went on my head, like, they'd all be kind of... <laughs> They're all like almost together. I would almost. I would have put off doing this list completely, like if I really thought about it, because I yeah. wouldn't have been able to rank them. So I had to just do it really quick. Yeah. Like yeah. if I if we did this again tomorrow, now my ranking would be totally different. Yeah, I'd say so too. I'd say so too. Yeah. So yeah. don't don't kill us. Like. Yeah, this is just kind of completely uh, messing around. And to the guy that came on to me when you said don't kill us in one of the videos and said kill you, I'll give you this. This will kill you. Please, you know, it's the real world, okay? You know, fix it. But anyway, like, I've got, I'm into my top three and I've put Bruford at number three, right? Uh, I purposely picked uh, Sterlis and Bible Black because I think on this one, his drumming really opens out in this album. He really starts to become who he can be. He's been influenced by Jamie Muir on the previous album, coming out with some great stuff. Here we have another um, innovator. Oh, yeah. I think Bruford's a real innovator in drama. I think the album that he's done is fantastic. Uh, I saw the guy playing live three times and he's boring. Sorry, lads. That's why he's at number three. Okay? Okay. No, no, he's, he's, he's a great drummer. <laughs> Stop it now. Well, we're about to be assassinated, as I'd say. Tara. <laughs> But but uh, I was expecting like to see this kind of oh, it's Bill Bruford and I I sat there and he just kind of plays the drums just sitting real upright and, you know he never you never really feel like he's you know which is like all in his favor but you never really feel like he's pushing himself for anything when you watch him live you know mm. and uh, yeah I've seen other drummers play live like Carol Palmer as as a live performer as a drummer uh, would far outstrip Bill Bruford. So, uh, but like, I mean, what Bill Bruford does now is brilliant and what the albums and everything are fantastic. But that, I, I'm trying to make an excuse as to why he's number three. Because I think it would have been, if we were doing the lazy version of this, both of us would add him at number one. No? No, she's looking at me like she's not. But I think the lazy version of this, I'd put him at number one. And I'd say, oh yeah, he played with three of the big six. He's done this, he's done that, he's done the other thing. But what takes it away from from a for me is uh, when I saw him live a few times and he just he just kind of you know Bill did you leave your personality at home or something <laughs> but there you go yeah. sorry now like if you're a big Bill fan and I'm not taking Anton away from as a drummer technically fantastic as an innovator fantastic but that's all that, that's why he's number three and I just didn't want to have him at number one because it would have been a lazy would ranking been if I did that yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, I've just realised my top three are all fusion drummers. Danny Seraphin. Is that how you say his name? I think so. Uh, Seraphine. Seraphine. Uh, wow, like a powerhouse out and out. Like to play with the Chicago in the early days when they were just mad jazz fusion. Like nuts. And that album is a case in point. It all starts with drumming. I'd say everyone will be shocked that it's me pulling out Chicago <laughs> for once. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to have him mm. up high on my list. I think I, I'm a bit biased because I feel like guys who can do jazz fusion and everything are, are just unbelievable. Yeah, I noticed there's a bit of a corner to that, Ron. Yeah, it's yeah. It, it's a, maybe it's you. a recent thing with me. Like uh, I've really gotten into jazz fusion in the last year. Okay. And I'm very impressed by it. Like, you know, I think jazz on its own even is just absolutely incredible to be able to do and I as someone who has no rhythm whatsoever <laughs> like if I tried to play the drums I'd be I'd be fake like, yeah, I can't be fine. no I can't I can't coordinate my legs and my hands at the same time so it's very impressive to me when someone can drum like and especially these jazz guys I think are incredible and then to go into fusion mm. I think is just mind blowing so yeah that's why my top three is the way it is. <laughs> well, he, he really reminds me of Carol Palmer. He's an incredibly yeah. uh, brilliant technical player. Like he's fantastic. Great choice, actually, Tara. 
See, I didn't get to pick Chicago. So I'm into my top two now. Oh, Lise Bruford made the top three. And my number two is the great John Heisman. John Heisman was a... And, and I, I, yeah, I've yeah, got Coliseum too here, the first album. I might as well yeah. just pull mine out then because it's the same. Yours is number two as well, John yeah. Heisman. <laughs> and it's Coliseum too as well. Okay, John Heisman was a power of, of nature. He was incredible. Yeah, and he was technically fantastic yeah. at the same time. He's the only guy that I can say that about in this whole list, really, you know, that he's he's got both those things going for him. He's absolutely astounding. I never got to see John Heisman play. I would have given my right arm to see him play. Looking at video of this guy playing, he was just something else. Absolutely. I would have loved it as well. And again, like it's another case of me having to just watch videos of him playing live. And he, oh my God. Now he's, even having him at number two was really difficult for me to decipher between the two. Like, mm. But, uh, oh my God, when I see people doing top drummer lists and they don't even have him on it, I'm like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. you have to have the master in there like yeah. so yeah yeah, yeah. alright well you uh, go on to your number one okay my number one is the man whose uh, stool he took over in the Graham Bond organisation when he left uh, to form Cream and it's uh, Ginger Baker uh, absolute you talk about the the force of nature this guy <laughs> I just remember being a young lad and listening to Cream listening to Ginger Baker's drum. Uh, you know, I kind of started with some of the metal stuff, then I went from that into stuff like John Bonham, uh, Ian Pace, and that sort of thing. And then just, when you get to him, it yeah. just stops, like, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I, he's here as number one with me because of the effect that hearing him play the drums had on me. You know, he was just, like, yeah, astounding, absolutely astounding. I did get to see him play live as well, which was incredible too, you know. Uh, so, yeah, that was fantastic. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he was everything live that you hear in the studio and everything like that. Just this maniac behind mm. the drum kit. Um, like a controlled explosion going on behind the drums. Uh, yeah, Ginger Baker, number one for me. I love that documentary you showed me about him, Beware Mr. Baker. Oh yeah, it's on YouTube, he, free, yeah. He talks about how he got into drums, like, and, and I, the way he's talking about African drumming and how it, you can really hear that in his playing, how you that can. influenced yeah, him, and yeah. the way he holds his sticks and yeah. how particular he is about the way he plays and everything, yeah. it's just incredible. And sometimes, and he was one of the guys with this double bass drum thing. Yeah. And sometimes when he's playing and the music is open, you can hear that African thing going on, and it's like there's almost a conversation between his feet and his hands. Yeah, it's just going on. It's just what? like and when you hear Baker, there's nobody like him, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean Bill Bruford was more innovative, you yeah. know. Uh, somebody like Danny Seraphin or uh, Carol Palmer were more technically great. But, I mean, he was just the package. I mean, you know, mm. absolutely astounding guy. You know, so, yeah, Ginger Baker, number one for me. So, Tara, who's your number one? So, my number one is Billy Cobham. Oh, my God. Who I, Controversy I, or what, Tara? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you saw my reaction when I listened to the Mahavishnu Orchestra the first time. I, I was, oh, my God, oh, my God, for about two hours afterwards. <laughs> Oh was, my was god! Very sad, yeah. Like yeah. incredible. I'd first seen him in like documentaries I was watching about Miles Davis and obviously he played with him quite a lot and you have to be very good to play with Miles or you're in big trouble like. Mm. And then I heard him with the Mahavish <laughs> Mahav <laughs> <laughs> Mahavishnu. Just in case orchestra. you noticed we cut the film at the start of this because <laughs> pronunciation problems were coming in as well. Go on. Oh my god. I first heard him with the Mahavishnu Orchestra and I was blown away and I think he's absolutely incredible and putting him above John Heisman was very like the two of them would be interchangeable for me like I'd say they're on the same level personally 
Um, yeah, so Billy Cobham is my number one. Very jazz orientated there, Tara. Very yeah. jazz fusion orientated. So uh, fantastic. Yeah, um, they're just their opinions, you know. Um, so don't like criticizes if you want and as I said there was a lot of factors that came into this uh, well you, you can give us your own lists and tell us why you think uh, they're good that would be nice you know so um, anything like that and any feedback that you have and any experiences that you have maybe seeing some of these drummers live would be fantastic because we're getting some great stories from people about concerts and things that they've been to and, uh, and the comments which is fantastic so uh, yeah, anything anything like that would be great. Um, yeah, I mean we used a lot of factors in who we picked here, and we didn't go down the obvious route. Okay, mm. so so it was there was a lot of um, kind of um, how can I put it subjectivity on this one. Okay, so yeah, please feel free to uh, give us your lists in the comments. Uh, I know this, uh, there's absolutely amazing amounts mm. of drummers, and there's loads that we probably didn't even think of. So. You could rattle the cobwebs out of her heads a little bit. With no, a few. I know a few people now are going to say Phil Collins. Yeah, well. Uh, but a great drummer, nonetheless. Yeah, very good drummer. But uh, yeah, please uh, feel free to come back to us and uh, we'll hopefully see you all in the next video. Remember, if you're not subscribed, please do. Okay, thanks very much. It all helps us. Bye-bye.